Hello and welcome to my video explanation of the project for 2017. As you can see this is the main menu. From the main menu you can select different options. You can see the instructions and you can select the card you would like to play with. In the options I only set for this both type 1 option which is to disable or enable deployment fuel. If it is disabled, the player would have a time to race, a time to run. If it's disabled or enabled, the endless mode means that there is no timer for the player. <coughs> Over the top right corner you can see that there is a shop button, but the front end of the shop is not yet implemented. In the top right corner you can see that there is the currency here, so that means that the pack the business logic of the shop is working, credits is working, I just have to do the front end of the shop and make it a bit more interactable. For now the player can just select a car for free. In this video demonstration I will be using Mustang for this run. This is the instructions where the player is explained all of the controls. There is the fuel which is obviously good and it increases the timer left for the player and the barriers um, obviously the player will lose for vehicles will crash with near misses you can get an extra 250 points and also increase the time left which makes it easier for the player if the timer runs out obviously the player will lose as well also the near misses can be combined together if the player does more than one near miss within 5 seconds, the player will have a combo which increases the score being rewarded and increases the time being rewarded. The player can use the other left or right button or A or D to control. Or if one wishes, the player can also use an Xbox controller or a PlayStation 4 controller. We select play. The player is given 3 seconds initially before starting. Since this is an endless mode, there is, you can see on the top right there is a score. I will also be demonstrating the timer soon. As you can see, the cars can switch between lanes. There is an object, an invisible object in the middle of the road, far away, from the, far enough for the, from the player for him to give him time to react, and close enough to make it challenging. Okay, so. Let's go to the main menu and do timer mode. Once again, the player is given 3 seconds initially, and now on the top left corner you can see that there is a timer. As, was, as I previously mentioned, the timer will increase if I perform a near miss or collect fuel. So now I will demonstrate the combo. The player is shown he has done a combo and also he, he has 5 seconds to perform another team miss for the combo to be to continue now there is going to be a huge crash <laughs> okay so cars have a script attached to them which makes them switch lanes and interact with the user the switching of lanes is performed at a random there is a 1 or 0 random value uh, so that's a 50% 50 50 chance that the car will switch lane upon hitting the invisible object. And if that's basically if the car should switch lane, if the car should switch lane, the car will switch the lane or move slightly to the left or right depending on which is the closest left barrier or right barrier. Um, there is a algorithm which detects which is the furthest away from the car and it decides on a side for the car to go and also it calculates the distance between the car and the wall and the barrier and uh, the car moves from the current position with a minimum of a small difference so if it has to move, it has to move and I think there's a bug there okay. the player the car, sorry, um, moves to the left or right and at a random distance between the car current position or the barrier. Okay, so now I will 
explain how the car is unsensitive. Okay. The car is unsensitive from an invisible object across the other side of the road. Basically, this object instantiates, which means creates um, both the cars and the buildings at a, at a random timer as the game gets harder as the player goes deeper into the run the cars and buildings are instantiated um, more frequently to make it um, seem as if the player is going actually faster and there are more cars making it harder okay I actually I lost because it was a time more than the timer ran out um, okay when the cars or buildings um, get outside of the time trial. When the cars and the buildings get out of the field of view of the camera, which means they go behind the player, the cars and buildings are destroyed by another invisible object um, to decrease the load on the RAM. Because if you leave game objects alive when even if you are not using them, you will increase uh, the usage of the RAM, which makes it, which makes your code um, basically unreliable. Okay, so now I will use a different car to demonstrate different of the cars. As you can see, the controls work. The player can play with this car. This is the Celica which I modeled for myself. Unfortunately. It was a quite successful project, <laughs> but still. Um, for some reason, I exported from Autodesk Maya to Unity um, some faces basically, and materials got lost in the transaction. Um, for example, the back window disappeared, and I didn't really have enough time to fix it. So, yeah, I prefer to use different cars. I think that's about it. I think that's about everything. In the next video, I will be explaining how everything works on the back side, on the back end. Basically, everything is an illusion in this game, and I will explain it in the next video. Thank you very much. Welcome back to part 2 of this video. Um, I will demonstrate what happens in the back end of this game. Basically, as you can see, this is the main menu once again. These are the objects which I used, the buttons, and the o there is also the three buttons of the car selection which is um, being uh, created in a different method so they do not appear here. Okay, so if I select play, this is the scene of the um, game control, of the gameplay, sorry. Um, as you can see, I objects are generated from the other side, as I previously mentioned. And since, as I said, this is all an illusion, um, you can see that the cars are actually coming in the direction of the player and the player is not really moving. Um, you can see the textures moving uh, faster than the cars themselves. You, ca you can also see part of the um, AI for the cars. When they move, you can see that there is a red line that's basically detecting the distance and collecting data from the other object which is in front. Uh, there could have that could have been implemented using different techniques, such as using a collider for the cars, which is bigger than the car itself, and doing setting it as a trigger, collecting data about the other object, which basically um, I think could have been a bit better in a way, since it will be a square collider. You can get the if a car is hitting it. Um, if a car is about to crash from the left side, you get the you can still detect it basically, because the ray casting only s I'm only shooting one ray cast from the center of the vehicle. So if cars are about to crash from the left hand side or the right hand side, which basically the ray cast wouldn't mm, detect. But still, the ray cast is a bit better for um, detections basically, since it's lightweight. Um, colliders may cause problems and issues with the player himself and yeah that's about it as you can see objects sorry time ran out as you can see <coughs> objects are destroyed when they hit that long 
basically trash can. I will show you now. As I previously stated, it will decrease the load on the RAM. There, everything is destroyed when it hits the trash to decrease the load on the RAM. I think that's about it from the back end. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my video.